Today I'd like to talk about creating approximate dwells with all revolute four bar mechanisms. Um, this dwell is considered approximate because as the crank rotates, um, the point of the mechanism that stops moving will not completely stop. It will have a little bit of motion, um, but very slight in comparison to the rest of the mechanism. To do this, we need to find a coupler curve that has an approximate arc. Um, the center of that arc will be our dwell position. This is one such mechanism that I've designed here in a software package called Force Effect Motion um, by Autodesk, which I believe has been discontinued, um, but it's going to be helpful just to show us uh, relatively quickly um, how to go about designing these um, four bar all revolute dwell mechanisms. So here we see uh, this linkage moving. We see the coupler point tracing this path. And over here, you can see this um, arc that I'm talking about that I'm going to use. The center of that arc is going to be my dwell location. Um, the great thing about this particular mechanism is that it is a, um, this uh, is a symmetric four bar mechanism, which means it's creating a curve which has the identical shape on either side of a line of symmetry. That line of symmetry is when the crank is collinear extended with the ground link. So I'm going to put it there. And that's the line of symmetry is right here. This makes it a little easier to create um, the dwell mechanism because I know then that the center of the arc, if I'm talking about um, uh, this portion of the arc, I know that line of symmetry is going to be, I'm sorry, the center of that arc is going to be on the line of symmetry. Now if I was concerned about using maybe this, just this portion of the arc or this portion of the arc, that wouldn't be the case. But I'm using the arc on this back side here and I use as much of it on either side, then that center is going to be on this line of symmetry. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I've done it for this particular mechanism and I want to show you that result before I show you about how to go about the actual design on paper. And so here we have um, that same mechanism. And the difference here is that the mechanism is shown with um, a slider. Uh, really, we have two additional links that we've added. Here is that coupler point E. Here is a link. This link has the same radius as that arc does. Um, and at the end of that radius, we have a slider. And what you're going to see is as that coupler point traces the path, the slider is going to move up and down, but when the coupler point is on that back side, on that arc, it's on the part for which the radius is unchanging, which means this point H, the slider is not going to move, and that's the actual item that's dwelling. So let's add a, um, a motor here and go ahead and watch this motion. Okay, so now we see the arc translating, um, uh, the coupler point moving along the arc, and when it gets up here, you'll see the slider stop moving. That's the pause or the dwell. And this is the maximum stroke. And then it's going to come back up again, and again, it was on the back side, it's just going to hang out there and wait until it moves again. And so this four bar mechanism allows us to, well actually ends up being six bars, but um, that continuous rotation of the crank, whereas part of the mechanism, in this case a slider, stops moving. Now that's a translating um, output, but we can also create a, a rotational output, and I've done that previously, and I'll just show that. I won't really go into much detail about how this part was um, actually done, but I just want to kind of show you um, the operation of it. And so, uh, we had a pause here. So let's see. Not sure what was wrong there, why that didn't run. Um, let's try again. Okay. And so now we've created a rotational output. There's motion down to the maximum point and it's moving back up. And at some point, this point F is going to stop moving and just hangs out right there. So F is just hanging out right there, and then it starts moving again. And so again, our approximate dwell, but with this time a um, rotational output link. So again, the first thing that we need to do when wanting to design a four bar mechanism, um, and then add two additional links to create an approximate dwell, is to find a coupler curve that has a uh, pro approximate arc in it, a pseudo arc in it. 
And to do that, I'm um, using our text and going to a table in that textbook um, where it shows a lot of different choices of symmetric coupler curves. And here is one of the pages. And I'm going to focus just because I'm, I'm choosing to on this particular coupler curve. You can see it has an arc here. Um, this is one in which the common link ratio, is, uh, the ground link ratio is 1.5, and the common link ratio for all of these um, various ratios is 2.5, and my gamma is 252 degrees. And so I've drawn that, um, and I use the method to draw that, when, which I've talked about previously in a different video. So I just want to go ahead and show the result here. And so this is that mechanism, and as you can see, it's going to trace out the path that I chose. Um, now to go about the rest of that design, again this is the first part, you have to at least get a curve so you know what you're trying to match in terms of that circle and the center of that arc, the center of that circle, which is going to be your dwell location. You've got to draw it first. So now what I want to do is um, go ahead and mark, again since this is a symmetric coupler curve, I'm going to go ahead and mark that line of symmetry because I know that on this line is going to be the center of my arc and my dwell location. So I'll go ahead and mark that line there. And now I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to put it on that arc and somewhere here and just guess a point. And I'm going to see if I can trace out this path and get a little smaller. And I can be on that path. Oops, I'm kind of leaving the path. So here I'm on the path not very long, okay, so I start on the path about right there and I leave the path about right here. Again, it's symmetric. That's not, that's not going to be much of a dwell, right? So for very little motion of my crank will I be dwelling if I only do this point. So I'm going to open a little bit further, move that center point a little bit further down and see. So there I am again. So from here to about here, I'll be dwelling, okay? Now I would like to dwell for the majority of this arc, and so I'm going to see if I can do that. If it's just by moving this line further down, see here, I'm going to open this guy up. And this is very much kind of a trial, I mean, it's just a trial and error type of situation. Okay? And so I'm on the curve there, staying on that curve all the way to about here. So I leave the curve about right there. So let me go ahead and mark that location. So that's where I'm leaving the path, about right there. And leave it right there and I stay on it and leave it also about right here. Now this isn't a perfectly drawn item. I kind of did this by hand obviously. And so it's not perfect but I'm going to label this point P0 and this point P1. And so that's the range for which I will be dwelling. And then this will be the center point or the dwell location. And so now what I need to do, I know that that radius, this is the radius, this is the link length for the fifth link that I'm going to add and it's going to be attached at one end to the coupler point. It's going to have a slider here. But oh, I would really like it if this whole linkage was drawn so that point P wasn't down here but it was over here someplace. And So to do that I'm going to go ahead and use, drew this little coupler out earlier when I was drawing this linkage and again I, I talk about how to do that in a different video. But I'm going to, I would love to have that drawn like over here like somewhere in this range. And so I have a little circle representing my crank rotation and this arc representing the motion of my rocker. So I'm just going to put A on that uh, circle and B somewhere on that rocker. So about right here. And so that's not a bad point. I'm going to draw in my linkage here. Make that my point P. So this is going to be my point P and I call this, ooh, I have a P here. Um, I'm call this P2, so P0, P1, P2. Okay, so this is the point. I'm going to erase the one next to it. I want to use that one. Okay, so I'm going to draw in the linkage there. And so that is a place where this should be the location for A. So I'm going to call that A2. And the location of B should be here. So I'm going to call that B2. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and draw these in. So, And really, it would be great if I could draw these in with a different color. Let me go ahead and grab a color here. Uh, let's see, do I have a blue pen? Mm, 
Oops, that's not good. That pin's not working so well. I have one that will work here. Okay. And so let me go ahead and draw in this linkage in blue so it'll show up a little bit better. So. So here's my crank, and um, my coupler goes up to this point B2, so I'm going to draw that in now. Great. And of course, comes back to O4. And then I'm going to use this guy because I know that that was A and B. And so that's my point P over there, just kind of rechecking. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my coupler here. So let's go ahead and get that in there. And comes over from B. Okay, and so that's the linkage. It's kind of the one I wanna focus on here. Now, um, since we have all of these here, it would be great if I could kind of erase some of these other lines. Let me see if I can do that. So let me go ahead and kind of get some of these others off of here because they are somewhat distracting. So let's get these off. So now we don't see the other linkage that we had there before, and this makes the other, the one in blue, really stand out, okay? So with that there, let me go ahead and draw in the other pieces. This is the fifth link and the slider being the sixth link. And I think for that, maybe, um, it would be great if I had a red pen. You would think I would grab all these before I started. Uh, let's see here, red, red, red. So I got a red. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in this guy here. Then I should have a slider block. So I'm gonna try to draw in that slider block here. And that slider block is sliding. I'm gonna go ahead and draw this in. Ooh, how about I draw this one in black? Just doing all kinds of cool stuff, right? Um, black pen, black pen. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So I'm gonna show this kind of like the book shows it kind of hashed kind of hash it out like that okay and so what we have here then is as this coupler point moves starting about here all the way over to about here what we're gonna have during that time period is no motion of this guy. This guy's gonna sit here because the radius doesn't change. If you look at it, let me just take a sheet of paper here just to kind of do a quick proof of what we're talking about here. The length is from there to there. Okay. And as you see, that same length exists at point P, points in between, point here, point over to here, and finally the point P1. Now once we get outside that range, let's say here, we can no longer have this point 
and have the slider block here. The slider block now has to move down. And when we're way down in here, the slider block is way down. It's way down. It's going to be way down here someplace. And so this is a dwell location. So this is our approximate dwell. That's our approximate dwell location. Our maximum stroke is going to be the place that is where this slider block is the lowest location. And that will happen probably right here because you look at it, we know the block is always along this line. And this point is the furthest down. And so if we go here, we know that the maximum stroke is going to happen way down here. So I could come down here, I better put it on the same line. And then I will draw in, I'm going to kind of dot it in here. And that would be my maximum stroke location. So my maximum stroke happens way down there. Okay, and that's how you do a um, all Revolute 4 bar approximate single dwell mechanism design. You first find a coupler curve with a um, arc in it. Um, you draw that curve and then you go about and since this if you picked a symmetric one then you find that line of symmetry and you can uh, decide where on that line how far down on that line is going to be your center for the arc the portion that you want to remain um, dwelling for again we could have dwelled way up here if we only wanted to dwell for some small period of time but if we want to dwell for longer then we end up with a longer fifth bar um, and then we go ahead and draw it in and of course if we have a CAD package or another thing similar to force effect motion we can go ahead and animate it and see how it works. Um, and that's the conclusion of this uh, lesson. Thank you for listening.